climate change isn't some distant phenomenon humans can afford to worry about later. It's happening now, and its effects, especially in the Southwest, can be felt every day. Regionally, climate scientists say increasing temperatures in New Mexico and throughout the Southwest decrease the amount of snow runoff that flows into river basins like the Rio Grande, affecting the area's water supply. NMSU plant and environmental sciences professor and state climatologist Dr. Dave Dubois says less snow at higher elevations has serious implications for managing water resources. At least in southern New Mexico, we rely on the surface water coming from Colorado coming down, and we like it to melt at a certain time and then fill our reservoirs from, you know, from all the way from Colorado all the way down to Elephant Butte and Caballo. And climate change is actually changing the way that happens, and it's actually less water coming down. So it's not only the timing, but also the amount of water is, is decreasing. University of Arizona associate professor Dr. Greg Garfin studies climate, natural resources, and policy, and recently visited New Mexico State University to speak at a climate change seminar series. Garfin says along with reduced snowpack, climate change decreases soil moisture and increases the number of wildfires. So one of the things we've seen uh, throughout the Southwest and in New Mexico as well is because we have a longer snow-free season and because we have higher temperatures, we um, have experienced a longer fire season, fuels dry out more, and all it takes is an ignition. We can have some very devastating fires. So we've seen much larger fires in the last decade or so than we've seen previously in history. A federal study states the number of large forest fires in the western U.S. and Alaska has increased since the early 1980s and is projected to rise even more with climate change. Garfin says burning fossil fuels releases heat-trapping gases into the atmosphere. Meanwhile, deforestation reduces the Earth's ability to remove those gases, creating a greenhouse effect. As a result, Garfin says higher temperatures worsen drought and threaten surface water sources like rivers and lakes. The evidence is that surface water is going to be less reliable in the future. It's not like all the surface water is going to go away, but will, it'll, as I said, it'll be less reliable. There'll be lower flows, longer droughts, or more severe droughts. Data from the fourth National Climate Assessment shows global average annual temperatures have increased one degree Celsius from 1901 to 2016. In the United States, temperatures are projected to rise about one and a half degrees Celsius by 2050 and past two degrees Celsius, the limit before climate change becomes dangerous by the end of the century. According to the study, heat waves have become more frequent in the United States since the 1960s, while extreme cold temperatures and cold waves are less frequent. Garfin says while there's natural variations in climate, increasing temperatures are drying the Southwest. Naturally, climate change affects more than humans. Dr. Gary Romer is a professor in NMSU's Fish, Wildlife, and Conservation Ecology Department. Romer says drought and increased land surface temperatures due to climate change have impacted his studies on rodents like prairie dogs and banner-tailed kangaroo rats. Romer says the effect of climate change on wildlife is a good predictor of what's to come for people. If we impact our biosphere to the point where it's um, having a more difficult time, if you want to look at it this way, of supporting wildlife populations, well then it, we're going to have a more difficult time supporting ourselves as we continue to degrade the biosphere. Romer says New Mexico's ability to sustain agriculture is also something to take into account. And so with that, we're going to have a harder and harder time, you know, watering our crops and, and keeping up with, um, you know, production as we have in the past. So we have to come up with strategies to deal with the potential for these types of long-term droughts and extreme temperatures. Garfin says there are many ways people can reduce their carbon footprints now, like installing renewable energy sources in their homes and switching to cleaner modes of transportation. 
Dubois says it's not too late for people to take action to reduce their environmental impact. The damage has already been done, but it could get worse. <laughs> and we don't want that to happen. We want to keep it at a certain level, and then we can deal with it. Experts agree if climate change isn't dealt with now, there won't be a later opportunity. For KRWG, I'm Michael Hernandez.